So yeah, let's talk about this. I want to talk a little bit about Ravi's situation. Um, there's more disturbing news that came about um, in regards to. There's more disturbing news. I want, but I want to start us off with this verse in Psalms 146 and three. It says, "Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man, in whom there is no help." Um, and if you want to go ahead and insert, put not your trust in pastors, that still works. Put not your trust in presidents, that still works. And I think we need to set the foundation there because a lot of people, you place so much faith in, in people that are in leadership and people with high positions. And we think that because someone is in a godly position, that means they're living a godly life when that's not always the case. Um, so first and foremost, it's not going to be a video slandering him. I don't see the point. I believe there's some lessons that Christians need to take from this. But what I will say before we dive into the lessons, please pray for the victims, the women that were abused, the women that were... Please, let's just cover the victims, their families, the women who went through some things that they had they shouldn't have gone through, the people who, you know, they may turn away from God because that was their, their leader and people... You know that that think the church is full of hypocrites because of situations like this you know so let's pray for the the people that are affected by it the most and that's those people but i believe that there's some lessons that we need to take out of this because a lot of times you know we you know we look at these people in high positions that we think oh he's just a sinner he's just a hypocrite and we we quickly forget how if we are not careful that is us that is our pastor, that is our parent, that is us falling into that, those types of sins. So there are a few lessons that I want us to take out of it. And number one, I want us to understand that you can only hide your sins for so long. And I believe it's because a lot of times we think because we can hide it from our neighbor, hide it from social media, hide it from our family, hide it from our pastor, that we think we're hiding it from God. You can only hide your sins for so long. Because in reality, if no one finds out about your sins, God still sees it. And you still have to answer to him on judgment day in regards to those sins. So I want I want to make that clear that I don't think you're ever pulling one over on God, that God is ignorant of the lifestyle that you may be hiding. And I think it's important because those private sins that you have, they're going to become public issues if you don't resolve them. Trying to hide a little porn on the side, try to hide another man or another woman on the side. It's going to come up. It's going to bring up an issue. And I believe that God gives us space to repent. So God, sometimes he doesn't correct us immediately because he's given us an opportunity to repent, to turn back to him, to stay in a relationship with him. But if you keep going along that path, those sins will be exposed, you know. And if someone's sin is public, I don't think that means God hates them. I just think that that's definitely an example that God tried to get you to repent and you didn't. That's like David when the prophet Nathan, where he's pretending he's not the issue. He's not the reason behind this woman, this man's wife being pregnant, pretending it's not his fault. And God had to send a prophet Nathan to expose him. So I'm not saying I'm here to expose Robbie or any of you should be exposing anyone else in your church. I'm just saying that God is always aware of the sin that is in our life. That's why David said, cleanse me from secret faults, because sometimes there's some secret sins in your life that you may not even know about, some hidden things that you may not even be aware of. So never think you can get to the point where you can hide those struggles from God or hide those issues from God because the church may not know, but God sees it. Number two, the ministry that you have is not is not giving you a green light to live any type of life. Um, because there are a lot of people that think because they're a pastor, they can use their position to abuse God's people, to take God's people's money, to, to sexually abuse and all kinds of things to God's people. Don't think that your ministry gives you a platform for you to push your agenda, to push your kingdom. You are giving a ministry to serve God's people. That is what ministry is, serving. Not serving yourself, but serving the people, serving the kingdom of God. And I believe that there's a lot of people that have a platform you know, and they're in the same sins, you know, that their sins aren't exposed just yet, but they're in the same things. And God has given you an opportunity to repent because just because you can preach doesn't mean that God is happy that you're not praying. Just because you can preach doesn't mean that that secret pornography that you're hiding doesn't mean that God is pleased with that. So there are a lot of issues that people have that you know, they continue to go on with their life like it's okay. You know, so if it's you, I believe that this is a clear indicator that we need to repent. We can't sit here and pretend that God is pleased with our, our hidden 
our hidden actions are you know things that social media would never know about us you know because having a great platform and people see golly dating with so many followers and they think oh, okay you know they have it all together no having a lot of followers is not a direct connection to a walk with god there are a lot of people with a, a spiritual platform with no spiritual life and they preach but they don't have the word inside of them and you know they tell you to pray but they don't pray and it's so easy for us to get to that point there are a lot of pastors and and leaders and speakers and all these things that don't have an actual walk with god they just know how to talk about the bible they're great communicators, but that doesn't mean they're actually conversing with God. You know, so I want us to be be aware of that, that God, God didn't give you that platform so you can do whatever you want. It's not okay to be preaching and singing and serving and making all these videos and posting all these things and still be in bondage to perversion still being bondage to the things of this world. Man, I'm not saying that, you know, once you get a platform, you never sin again, but it's the difference between falling into sin and practicing sin. Because one, you made a mistake, you get back up, you go, you repent, you know, you pursue after God. Another is when you continually do it and, and eventually you don't even care about the sin. You don't even care about the consequences. You're just going to do whatever you want. So please be aware that God is not pleased with that. Third thing I want you, you to understand is that if you're a believer, not if you're a pastor, not if you're Ravi, not if you're a prophet, not if you have a YouTube channel. No, if you are a believer, you need boundaries. Samson, yep, the strongest man that um, in his day fell into sexual sin. David, the man who, the only man who the Bible says, the man after God's own heart, yes, fell into sexual sin. Solomon, the wisest man in his day, yet fell into sexual sin. You and I will fall into the same sins if we are not leaning on God for strength. I know you think, oh, I would never, I would never be like Ravi. I would never be like that with those hypocrites. I would not, and you can say all of these, I would never, and you, you will do this and you will do that. You can say all of those things, but you can fall into the same sins if you don't lean on God for help, if you don't lean on God for strength. I want to make that clear to you. You know, because the lack of boundaries will always lead to a fall. Proverbs 4 and 23 puts it this way. Guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. So if we're not guarding our heart, it is easy that we allow things into our lives that gain access that God didn't want in our lives. And you have to think about a fence and a boundary, a, a barrier. A barrier does, does more than keep things out, but it keeps things in. There's some things that God deposits within you, like his Holy Spirit, that you need boundaries to protect, to protect your prayer life, to protect your family, to protect your marriage, to protect your ministry. We have to establish boundaries because if we don't, we're one step away from becoming what we just saw with him. We also have to think about it in regards to how today's generation is much different from how it was in the past. I was talking about talking about it with my wife today. Social media is literally pornography today. You know, when in the past where people you know, they, they hid the VHS tapes under their bed and they had to go and buy magazines. Now, open YouTube, open Instagram, open Twitter, open TikTok, and you see silhouette challenges and women naked because they want more followers and people dressing inappropriately because it gets them more attention. It literally is pornography, whether you choose to accept it or not. So please understand that you have easier access to go to hell than they did in the past. That's just plain as day. We have it very easy to pursue after the things of this world and pursue straight after the devil in a form of entertainment. So we have to be careful and set up boundaries so we're not allowing ourselves to be drawn away in certain conversations, in those pictures, in those people you're following, and all of those things. Boundaries are needed. And last and definitely not least, but seeking accountability. Do not wait until the affair. Do not wait until you're already in bed with them. Do not do not wait until somebody's already gotten pregnant. Don't wait until all those things happen for you to say, oh God, I need some help. Let me go talk to my brothers and sisters. No, you're struggling with pornography, but God delivered one of your friends from it already. Talk to them, ask them how they got free from it. And that way you can get free from it. You know, so do not think and, and let people judge you if they do, but you have to get accountability for yourself. So please understand, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.22, that flee also you for lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So it's one thing to run away from sexual sin. Good job if you're doing that, great. But it also says you need to be pursuing after God and those and, and the, 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 the things that God wants you to pursue after like faith, charity, peace with the people that are calling on the Lord out of a pure heart. So when you surround yourself with like-minded individuals, it keeps you and it gives you a desire to keep pressing. When you're discouraged, you see them pressing, you can lean on them. 
They can encourage you. They can tell you to keep going. Please never get to the point where as you think, you can just do whatever you want and it doesn't matter, you know, whatever is happening. No, get accountability. Never feel as though, you know, because what people are gonna say, you don't wanna seek help. No, you have to, because we easily end up in these situations where people have no accountability. They have no one that can correct them. They have no one that can tell them, hey, you seem a little bit flirty, your wife wouldn't like that. You know, when you don't have people around you that can correct you, then your life will spiral out of control. So I'm not here to post about Robbie necessarily, and, and you know, I'm gonna post the link in, in, in the description box if you would like to check it out. But please understand, we have to seek after God wholeheartedly. We cannot take this thing as a joke. We have to continually pursue after God because if you don't, you can easily end up in a situation, you know. But I started this off with the verse saying, don't put your trust in people because Ravi is just a man and all of us are susceptible to the same thing. So we have to understand that if we don't lean on God, not the pastor, not our favorite preacher, no, but lean on God, we will easily fall. Don't put your trust in people. People are people at the end of the day and they will fail. But put your trust in the Lord only because in him is peace, strength, help, you know, and he's the only rock that won't be moved. You know, so I pray that, you know, that the victims will, will receive the healing that they need and they will not turn away from God because of what happened. You know, and I pray that many of you will use this as an example to not follow no steps, but you will pursue after God and not allow your life you know, to don't get too comfortable with your Christianity, but to, to take your walk with God seriously. So I love you guys, man. Let's pray for the families, everyone involved, and have a great day. Be blessed in Jesus' name.